Mm. Okay, let's get right into it. Get right into get it. Get right into the video. Get right into the video. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> da, 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 da. Um, hey guys, hey, welcome, uh, welcome philosophers. Thanks for listening. Um, uh, you know, I got, I got, a, I got, a, I got, a, I got a topic today. I'm hot. I'm hot, Mike. Just get right into it, Danny. Danny, I'm hot. I'm, you know, I'm actually not. Yeah. I'm not that angry about Eddie, it. Eddie, so. Eddie can't join us today. He's in um, Guatemala, yeah, uh, serving soup to homeless veterans. <laughs> <laughs> and we wish him luck. <laughs> Go, Eddie. Yep. Um, oh fuck, I was gonna change my shirt too. Oh well. You did. You changed to the gray one, dark gray one. <laughs> it's like if you know me, you know I could have just changed my shirt, and you'd have no idea. Yeah, same. Black shirt, man. Um, anyway, so yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I apologize ahead of time if I'm clearing my throat and sniffling. I'm getting over. I've gotten over a pretty bad cold. We actually, why I wasn't in the past few episodes because I lost my voice. It was real fun. Basically, what happened is uh, we the the family went up to Washington to visit my sister. A couple, uh, couple reasons. One. I guess because my sister had a new kid and we all wanted to meet, you know, the new baby. You have to go up pretend you care. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's my new niece. Yay. Um, there was that. And then it was also Christmas. We got, you know, the family got to stick, you know, hang out and have like a late Christmas that okay. we all gave each other gifts. It was really fun. Um, the bitch of it was. And OK, let me retract that. It'd be easier to count the not bitches of going hanging out with your family for a mm. week and and where my at my sister's place. So we were all just kind of stuck together for a whole week. Um we went like the 4th or 5th of January. Um, the weekend prior, Mike had reached out to me because we were going to all hanging out. We were all going to hang out for New Year's. And he said, hey, I came into contact with someone with COVID, um, you know, just a heads up. And I was like, OK, you know what? If I wasn't meeting the new baby and I wasn't traveling with, you know, the family for a week, I'm just we're just going to play it super safe. Really sorry. Not going to go. We get to Washington where my sister is. The whole family's there. First day, my brother comes down with like a stomach flu. So he's on the toilet for like two days, you Perfect. know, and of course he gives it to a few of us. And that's great. Two days later, like a, a, a next day, my dad's coughing up a lung. He ends up giving the whole family a really bad cold. He gave my niece the croup. It was fucked up. It was so fun. And so I'm like the whole time I'm thinking, okay, you know what? I should have just went and hung out with Mike and gotten COVID because that would have been better than this. Anyway, we get back and we're still feeling, we're still feeling the effects. We had a great time. It was fun, whatever. But we, we get back and we're still, my wife and I are still feeling the effects and we're like, Ugh. and, uh, the subject came up. I forget who exactly brought it up, but I had a family member ask, you know, did you get tested? Do you know if it's COVID or not? And I said, no, you know, I didn't get tested. I mean, uh, you know, I'm feeling better. I'm going back to work and, uh, I don't really interact with people in my work. So there was no real reason. So I didn't get tested. And, mm -hmm. You know, they said, well, why didn't you get tested? You want to, you should get tested, find out if it was COVID or not. And I was like, well, why, why, mm -hmm. why? Um, because at the end of the day, I'm going to be sick at home for a, you know, a few days anyway. Yeah. Uh, and it kind of was good timing. Cause right now with Omicron going around, uh, there's new shutdowns, new mandates, new stuff kind of going back to the way things were mm -hmm. during shutdown because of Omicron. And there's been a crazy amount of testing. You even said, Mike, that you couldn't get tested because everything was just like booked up. and Yeah, so I ended up, um, I forgot what day it was. Yeah, New Year's, I didn't, um, I ended up getting, I found a test, I think the week after mm. and got it because it was one of, like literally everyone, everyone around me was, it was, you know, that meme where it's like the little dog drinking a beer or something and like the, the place is on fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, this is fine. Yeah, yeah. That was me. And people getting COVID around me. Oh, like okay. half my staff had COVID. <laughs> uh, friends of ours had COVID. Yeah. My, my, both my sisters had COVID. My brother. And I was just like, oh my God. How do I not have COVID? <laughs> and so at some point I was like, I might as well. Because my girl, she was sick, but her doctor, she didn't get tested. But her doctor said, these aren't COVID symptoms. Okay, yeah. But so like, I kind of had like a headache. And I was like, ah, let's just see. And I was naked. Negative. Okay. Yeah. See, and that but was, that was, was a week after that was a week after you, that happened. Yeah. And then that was me too, is that I've had colds before it was congested. I didn't have a fever, um, headache, but I was fucking congested. You well, know, no, the, the fever is the big thing. Even COVID aside, the fever I've, I, I've heard is like the big thing. Like if you have a fever, stay the fuck away from it's people. probably cause it's yeah. a flu. It's yeah. what, you know, anyway. Um, yeah, so I thought that'd be a fun kind of thing to bring up. I want to know what you guys thought about the the testing and the and the because I yeah. got I came to this back in 2020 where 
the shutdown was big and everyone was getting tested because everyone was freaking out. And I remember thinking like, what is the point of testing? If you think you're sick, stay, stay home. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you're not showing symptoms, what's the point? Um, Yeah, I think, I think, um, and I'm not, I'm not advocating anything, but I think the idea behind it was by testing, um, you can, help stop the spread of it because even if you're asymptomatic right okay if you yeah. test positive you're like okay i it's on me i could stay at home for a few days so that i don't spread it to someone else i think that was the idea of it and it continues to be the idea it's not necessarily oh uh, like i have to go see if i'm sick it's more like i i, I have to go see if i'm going to spread it or not i think that's kind of more the idea see that makes sense as like the the reason behind it yeah i wish i could say i saw that in the a lot of the uh uh, the objectives of people, why mm-hmm. they were no, because you just saw panic piling up, lining well, yeah. up, wanting to, you know. Um, I think I think a big problem with uh, with it too was, uh, you know, aside from testing, people just couldn't afford to take time off of work. Yeah, mm-hmm. and they they had to work, like they they had to make 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 their ends meet, you know. And um, I mean, it sucks. Like, I'm sorry you had to work when you were sick. And I'm even more sorry that you had to work when you were sick with COVID, but and take 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 the loss and stay home, man. Yeah, and you know what? And, and granted, in, in in retrospect, I I didn't catch it this time around. Yeah, like I I had COVID in the past, but there there came that kind of because interesting the question of um so I was talking to someone about it around that time or just around New Year's to where like. It was a rough couple of weeks, by the way. Like half, <laughs> half, half, no, half our cooking staff, half our cooks were out with COVID, Ugh. like with pretty bad symptoms, not yeah. like death symptoms or anything crazy, no, but, but we're not bad symptoms. Work. So like, I was working the fryer mm. for like two or three days. Nice. So I got like a, a really quick training, and I said I was like, we're not doing the whole menu. I'm not working the grill. <laughs> Strictly fried shit, <laughs> like easy shit. And then like a bunch of our servers went out, and at some point, I was talking to our manager. And I was and kind of like I said, the whole like, oh, it's okay with everyone. I was like, I don't want to go get tested because if I have it right now, yeah. we're already like 50% down of staff. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm in a fortunate position to where I could do pretty much every job. Yeah. Um, So I could fill in as a cook in the fryer. The grill, fuck that, but the fryer. Yeah. And so there was like this moral dilemma in my head. I was like, should I get tested or should I not? Because if I test positive right now, yeah, and I have to, I guess, quote unquote, legally, I'm not really sure if it's legal. But at the end of the day, if you test well, positive, be- you're supposed to stay home from work. Yeah, and you're you're not only a manager, you're an owner, yeah, and a food handler. So, so that's like a- <laughs> that's 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 probably a big violation, and you're probably <laughs> no, yeah, getting some trouble. So that's where, like, at some point, I was like, I can't I afford a positive. Yeah, here. so I was I like, can't. I'm not getting, I'm not going to test myself, right. Because if I get the positive, we're fucked. Yeah. Then you just by ethically, you'd have to take time off. And yeah. Just, uh, yeah. And so that's where I finally kind of broke down and, and I found a rapid test and, and I, I got it. And I was like, all right. And even like the manager. And this is when like my, my partner was out for like five days already. Mm. Um, but I was just like, I, it's it was moral. It's just a moral thing. I was like, I feel ethically like I should at least see. Had I tested negative, maybe I wouldn't have told anybody. I don't know. <laughs> um, and that's horrible to say. But, no, you know. no, it's, yeah. Um, but no, it was an interesting, um, just dare I say from a philosophical standpoint, the, the, ethic, the ethical debate there of do I continue to work even though, like, because if I had tested negative, I'm sorry, tested positive, yeah, we possibly could have or possibly would have had to shut down for a day or two. Yeah. Because um, if I wasn't able to be there. There's just no point. It's just. Yeah. And. It it goes into that. It's it's the frustrating thing with. I'm going to get all po- political philosophy on you. Sure. It's like it's the it's the problem with the lawmakers, and I don't envy them for this. Is deciding the rules and the cutoff points and things like that. Because yeah. the truth is, it has to be treated like a case by case basis. If you had it, but you were asymptomatic and you were masked up and you were protected and you were kind of, there could be an argument made that you can and should stay working in order to keep the business going. Yeah. But to have blanket statements, like if you get it, you know, you're, you're, you're shut down for five days. I think CDC is the latest thing. It's Something and like then that, five yeah. days with a mask after and that's kind of thing. And it's frustrating when you're dealing with governing millions of people, mm-hmm. you need to have those blanket statements. But unfortunately 
it's all on a case by case basis. Yeah, I think anyway. No, no, and I think because there's something to be said about that. Um, I, I forgot who I was talking about it at one point. Uh, just and this is just generally speaking about shutdowns and et cetera. That like if and let's COVID aside, let's say this disease was a fucking killer disease, right? So they did some harsh shutdowns and harsh mandates. You're gonna get people who are afraid and want and are like, yeah, like 100 percent shut everything down. And people who are like, this is bullshit. Fuck you. But then as soon as like, cause it's one of those things, as soon as you go like, okay, well, people are upset about this. So let's, let's be a little more lenient. Mm. So you change the rules. So it's more lenient. Those people who already thought it was bullshit was like, see, see? it's yeah. not that big of a deal. If they're exactly. doing this, yeah. it must not be that big of a deal. It's really frustrating. So like I, I do, I think people who run for office are psychopaths <laughs> anyway. So why would you want that job? <laughs> yeah. But I do, as you said, empathize with them to where it's like, you're going to get shit no matter what you do. Yeah. From mm-hmm. one end of the spectrum or yeah. not. It's, and the more people you're governing, i.e. the bigger the government there, the more problems you're going to have. I mean, yeah. a mayor can probably decide his own town and be like, okay, well, the steel mill can't go down because that's our income. So, you know, we'll change the rules for that. But when you get to the, the governor of a state with 30 million pe- or 60 million people, yeah. you know, you're like, oh, God. Yeah. Well, fuck you, Newsom. You deserve it. <laughs> no, and you know what? Check it out. I, 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 I'm open about it. I am completely fuck Trump. But like, I didn't envy the guy. Oh God, no. Yeah. Like that, Biden too. Like, the, no, that, I don't. That's want that a job. shit. I don't. I don't no. no, Danny. What do you think? You think he'd be a good president? Say that again. Do you think he'd be a good president? <laughs> Who? You. you. Me? Yeah. Um. So I, it's funny that you said this because I asked my mom this the other day. My mom's like a staunch, like conservative Republican, and she was like, "No," <laughs> like didn't sugarcoat it. Just like, "No," <laughs> not even mom is like, "No." See, that's how you know your mom loves you because she'll tell you the truth about how she feels. Yeah. Like, no, I don't think no. so. Yeah. Oh my god. I will. I will <laughs> like, say. No, she, she, go. She knows my work ethic. She knows like what I'm about, <laughs> and she's just like, "No." <laughs> Who wouldn't trust you? <laughs> I think I would. I think I would make a good president. Yeah, I think so too. But I, I don't want that fucking job. I think, which is part of the reason why I would make a good president. Yeah, it's that you know, uh, uh, was mm-hmm. it uh, George Washington? Take it easy, Johnson. No, George Washington's quote of like not wanting it. He's like he took it because he felt it was his responsibility to take it, but he really just did not want to do it. And yeah. Then, well, and that so that and then so Danny made uh, a little comment at me. I think it was condescending. Uh, dare I say it was supposed to be, yeah. yeah. Danny, John Snow. Did you watch Game of Thrones? No. Okay, well, quick back back story. No spoilers. It's I'm been just years, kidding. Go man. Ahead. Go it's ahead. Been years. <laughs> so John Snow. You know nothing, Mitch Burke. You know nothing. Um, you. So John Snow was part of the the watch, um, and pretty much the the it's the commander, right? Lord Commander yeah, of the Lord watch. Commander. To when someone a commander dies, they, they vote the new guy in, and they don't. The person that's up for election, if you will, they don't advocate themselves. Mm. Somebody else puts. I actually thought that it was a really cool thing, because Jon Snow, who everyone loves, what didn't even want it, mm-hmm. and then at the day of the election, uh, it was Samuel, right, Tarly, Danny? Mm-hmm. Samuel Tarly goes, "I want to nominate someone. I nominate Jon Snow, and here's my reasons why." So of course. Of course, you're going to have like guys, if that were like a real case, like you're going to have guys who are like, okay, I want to run. I want to run for office. So Mitch, you be my guy. You put me up. Okay. But in that case, it was kind of nice for like a guy who didn't even want to run. Yeah. Someone just put him up and he ended up winning. Yeah. That'd be great if that were the way. Of course. You know? <laughs> because it really is like, if you look at all these, these photos of people, it's the, the time old thing. Like you look at photos of someone going into office and then, then coming out four yeah. or eight years. Oh later, yeah. 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 And it's just fucking it's aged. Aged. Yeah. Like. It's not a fun job. No, God, no, no, like, no, no. Dude, it's like, do you think they do it for the money? Like, you take it, you take too long of a shit. You're on Fox News and CNN. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> CNN's wondering if you're okay. Fox News thinks that you're 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 conspiring with some. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, like, yeah, fuck them. You know what? Fuck them. It's that's it's, what I mean. Like, <laughs> who that kind of like kind of just. No, they deserve Watch it. They you. deserve it. You know what? We 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 glorify these leaders because we need a king. We don't want to admit it, but we need a king, and we elect these kings, and we crucify them slowly every single day, and they slowly rot away. And it's like, yeah, I mean, we 
desperately need a leader that we can blame all our shit on because we don't want to mm, dare yeah. say that it's our own fucking fault. But anyway, um, I've always said um, I think the best type of ruling is a benevolent dictator. Yeah. You've always said that? Not out, not out loud <laughs> in my head. I think you... <laughs> First time hearing of it. Yeah. In no, my it's head, true. I've you always have said, always said that. <laughs> since, since, since today... I will write that down as a quote from you. No, um... Yeah, because yeah. A, a benevolent dictator, yeah. they don't have, they're not beholden to anyone, and right. they can make the righteous choices that are just nice. purely objective, kind of like a more military, just you know, but a nice guy, but nice. You but know. that's where you, okay. you have to really roll the dice oh, on okay. that. Uh, okay, so we've we've seen this happen. That's what I'm saying. Throughout it's history. not. It's 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 a bad roll of the dice. Uh, it's 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 the absolute power corrupts absolutely. Like it's like you can become a benevolent dictator, but over time, you're going to turn into a piece of shit. Yeah, my, what I'm saying, I'm advocating that that first part is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, typical, we know that. History has shown us that. In typical human fashion, I'm going to believe not the whole part, but part of it. That one part. <laughs> that we should have part. to figure out the second part. <laughs> and better yet, I'm just going to ignore the second part <laughs> and just, just focus on the first figure part. Figure out that second part. Yeah. You got to fix that. Here's another. I had another uh, fun thing that happened. This actually happened. I can't remember if it was last night or the night before. Um, it's <laughs> we're lying in bed. It's like it's. I'm in shutdown mode. Okay, lights are off. I'm in my comfy spot. I've closed my eyes deliberately. I'm I'm shutting down. I'm going to sleep. And she says, "Would you love me if yes. I was a bull?" Yes. It's like it's one of those like the the. the I gotta have a term for it, but it's like, would you still love me if I was a worm? No, you know, no. But anyway. She, she hits me with this stuff like every once in a while. It'll be like, you know, I'll be falling asleep and she'll be like, so when are we going to discuss the life insurance policy? I'm like, fuck. <laughs> okay, now I'm up. Like, you know, why? Why now? Why, like, <laughs> why now? Why now? And it's just the way her brain works. She just, you know, and God bless her. I love her. And, and but anyway, this this the, the other night she I'm like falling asleep. I'm in the, like the 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 last like, was that a dream or was that awake? I can't remember kind of moment. And she hits me with the. Do you think if everyone actually did stay home for two solid weeks, it would have gone away? Can I answer that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I guess my answer was <sighs> <laughs> roll over. <laughs> now, right now. Roll over. Right now. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Let me go put a pot of coffee on. Yeah. Let me get a pot the, put the pot of bourbon on. Because if you know me, you know you could drop that at lunch. It's going to be a bad lunch. We're yeah. going to like be yelling and kicked out. No, but anyway. Yeah, what, 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 what do you think, Mike? If My thoughts, because I, and I'm not a hypocrite. I, I'm From what I'm about to say, I was guilty of it too. And everyone, there's a lot of criticisms um, about it when they're like, see, we tried the two to three weeks. It didn't work. Let me tell you something. I would, uh, I would guess, you know, this is anecdotal. I would guess that... 60% of the population <laughs> in liberal California didn't do what they were quote unquote supposed to do when I it would started. Agree. I would agree. 60%, so yeah. I think hypothetically, if 100% of the people all stayed home for two to three weeks or mm -hmm. at least did what they were quote unquote supposed to do, mm -hmm. we would be out of it. I'm not a hypocrite. I did not follow the guidance 100%. <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah. I, I'm one of them. But I you're think a small I, business owner, man. Huh? You, you, you're a small business owner. You couldn't. Yeah. So all you care about is money. It's all. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> Traffic's good. This, you know what? Business. Oh, I love that quote, by the way. It's like business owners. All they care about is making money. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, no, but. Have you ever um, tried doing something without money? It's really fucking hard. <laughs> it's really fucking hard. <laughs> I went to In-N-Out. Trying to ha haggle with the guy. <laughs> Those fuckers, all they want is money. <laughs> <laughs> Wanted to offer him some 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 sketches I drew. I drew. <laughs> they turned off my iPhone status yeah. or my my iPhone service. I called them. Turns out all they want is fucking money. Ugh. <laughs> no, I, I I actually a hundred percent believe, and this it's it's an unrealistic thing to believe, like to to expect that if everyone did do quote unquote what they were supposed to, hmm. we would have been done with this a month or two in. See my response. I'm sorry, Danny. Did you have? A thought like what how you would have answered or? i i did and i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna play the safe bet and hedge it um i don't think that if a hundred percent of the population did what they were supposed to do uh we would get rid of it however i think it would make it it would have made it a hundred percent more more uh manageable i'd agree with that 
Yeah, I'd agree mm-hmm. with that. Um, See, what what I had... Hey. Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, I was done. Oh, uh, what I had said was, regardless of... I mean, uh, skirt the question, of course. But it was, uh, I had said, first of all, no. I think it would have hung out and it would still have been around, mm-hmm. maybe more manageable, but it wouldn't have gone away. The virus doesn't work that way. It doesn't just no, that's die fair. off. That's fair. Second of all, and I said, I kind of, because I was grumpy, I said... <sighs> They're trying to sleep. <laughs> yeah. If everyone in the whole world, if a hundred percent of the people were Christian, there'd be no problems in the world. If everyone followed one dictator or one mm. world government, everyone agreed. If 100% of people agreed on this one government, there'd be no problems in the world. Mm-hmm. It's juvenile. False. It's, it's, it's juvenile. And it's stupid to think that if everyone would just follow this one philosophy, that it would work. Um, I had an example and I forgot, but yeah, that, that was the kind of the point I had. It was it was that you're, you're right that if, if everything's the same shade of blue, then you wouldn't see anything. The I think one part of the lawmakers where they fell short was that they turned to their experts and they the experts said, okay, well, what we need is everyone to stay home for two solid weeks and it'll go away. Then they came back with, okay, well, not everyone's going to stay home for two weeks. And the experts went, well, fuck, okay, that's all we got. So if they can't do that, then you know, then mm-hmm. there's no answer. We're just going to hang on that. It's not going away until we did. So yeah. think of another. Ex- think of something else. I mean, there's there's a, there is a point to be made there that yeah, they could have tried to come up with something else. But I do think, um, and I said I'm guilty of this uh, in those those early days of the pandemic in 2020, people would come in to take out orders, and I would talk to a lot of people, and 99 percent of those people would tell me like, oh yeah, like. I'm going on vacation this weekend to Arizona with like yeah right <laughs> with like twelve people yeah like three different families. So I mean, the, I mean, the day, no in, one really did it. Keep in mind, for how blue California is, blue being Democratic, yeah. blue, Democrat, you know, swinging blue, it is truly only in the metro city areas of San Fran, um, L.A., San Diego, yeah. the city centers where they have the millions and millions of blue leaning voters. I think that's most blue states anyway. But most of the g- geographically, California is like like 90 percent red no that's actually, they're just super spread out i think that's but, a that's, that's a lot of states so that well yeah i mean true yeah. any rural area is going to lean more red but where we live where your bar is where oh, we it, live, it's heavily conservative heavily red so my my um my going back to it though my thing about the two to two to three weeks to, to flatten the curve or the fuck you want to call it I, i'm okay with with challenging the idea of it, but when people say, see, it didn't work. Yeah. That, that's what yeah. I'm like, because we never actually implemented it. Right. Um, it was never tried. Yeah. So. And like you said, like there, there's, def- there's definitely, you can critique that idea of wood shutting everything down for two weeks. Everyone stay home work. There's that. But to say, see, we tried that and it didn't work. Well, we didn't really try. Here's, it. here's my answer to that though, is because it was unattainable. That speaks to, how well it works because we well, didn't do it. And that, that's what I mean though. Like you could, you could critique the idea of it and how it from the start, it was not going to work. I think that's fair, but just, I've heard people say, Hey, we tried that and it oh, didn't okay. work. And it's like, no, cause we didn't like no one did. Like, okay. I, like half these people I talked to were like, yeah, we're doing this. I'm having 20 people over for a dinner party this weekend. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, well you're not doing it. Yeah. So, so don't, do, don't, so don't say, say it doesn't yeah. work if you're not going to do it. If you're not going to do it. Yeah. Okay. I get it. I have I'm, two pennies. I have two pennies. Oh, I forgot Danny was here. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so to, to go off that, could you guys imagine how worse it would have been if we didn't? Um, like the hospitalizations, the infection rate, and the death toll, how high it would have been if we didn't quarantine for those two weeks? Do you think it would have been worse? Because I absolutely think it would it would it would have been. Um, I I it's hard to say because you compare different countries and their different shutdown mandates. You compare New Zealand, who is one hundred percent shut down, don't leave your house, you know, fuck you, versus uh, um, um, Nor- Florida. Nor no not not even Florida, but like Norway, who just like Norway didn't took it more didn't yeah. like didn't even have a mask mandate, and their death and hospitalization rates weren't as drastic as everyone thought they should. They were definitely different, and I'm not going to quote stats because I don't know them, and people wouldn't believe me anyway. But I, I will say that Norway does have universal health care, though. You yeah, Norway also <laughs> has about a tenth of the population and one demographic True. in the whole goddamn True. country. So yeah, it's True. different. But but, but you're, you're right because I remember reading an article about that to where I think I think it was Norway that they they took a much more free approach to it, 
and their numbers were low. Meanwhile, you have New Zealand who took a strict approach to it, yeah. and their numbers were also really low. Yeah. So, so you have two different approaches that both worked. So the the bitch of it is, and this goes back to my empathy for the lawmakers, is they had nothing to go on. They it, were it doing what, yeah. they were doing what they thought was best, and the majority of their people that voted for them agreed. So that's just the, the yeah. at, at the end of the day, that's just the fact. Now we'll look back and see who is right and who is wrong. And it won't matter. No one will care. Like, hey, you were yeah, right. It, hey, you were wrong. Well, you know, fuck you. I'm not in office anymore. I'm retired. I'm, I'm retired. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. So yeah, I mean, what's what's the point of the of even talking about it? Fuck. Well, all right, I'll go home. Yeah, yeah. What's like, the point of talking about it, Mitch? Way to bring it up, <laughs> asshole. I mean, you know, does that? What do you What do you think about what do you What do you think to that? I mean, because I've I've heard the different countries, different policies, and and the results being very different. Florida, you even said Florida keeps going back and forth. It's super high, super low. It depends on what sources you go to to get what you know hospitalization rates and shit. So. Well, and they're they're always going to speak to the, the the science that proves them right. They're never going to talk about the opposition. They're never going to talk about the facts that prove them wrong. They're only going to highlight the ones that back up what they're saying. So, uh, I mean, it's 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 a very murky kind of situation in that regard. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, I think once we have time, once the history kind of figures it out and the dust settles around this whole the last five fucking years or whatever it's been. Um, we will see, um, essentially who was right and who was wrong. And, um, I don't know. I, I, I want to say that, you know, you know, cause I, I want to believe that the CDC doesn't have a fucking agenda. Um, that <laughs> science do. doesn't have a fucking, that science doesn't have an agenda. Yeah. It just, it's there to report, observe and report. Um, but I don't know, man, like you throw money at anything and everybody's going to, everybody suddenly has an opinion about it. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm of the mind that science uh, is penniless and it doesn't care. It just wants, it just cares about fact and truth. And that's what it wants to do. Yeah. But people, however, love money. So, and people. Oh, there he goes. Oop. Sorry. You cut out, but it was, it was a great, it was a great point. I mean, yeah, he's still frozen. But still okay, frozen. <laughs> sorry, Dan, if you can hear us, you're you're, you're frozen on our end. But um, maybe he'll pop back in. There. No, it's a it's it's a very good point. Is that difference that bridge between um, science and facts into making a law and the actual mm. like policy? When it, the difference between facts and policy? Because no, he's back. We've uh, oh yeah, sorry. I, hey, you cut out for a minute. But I was just saying about the bridge between facts and policy. Um, you know, the, we vote for people to make the policy and those people decide which experts they want to choose from Mm -hmm. and which facts they agree with. And it's, you know, we can say that we hate the politicians, but the truth is the majority of us elected that politician. So it's always a, it's a, it's a bitch. It's a bitch. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, 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 I feel like, and and it really came out, I'm not sure even where I'm going with this right now, but, um, in the last couple of years, like. I, as we've we've discussed, I, I actually like being challenged and being presented with new facts and being, because at the end of the day, um, I was watching something earlier. This guy said like, I have my own biases, but science is science. Yeah. Like, I shouldn't be looking for like, okay, what can prove my point right? It's just, let's just look for the truth. Mm-hmm. And it's just been kind of disheartening in the last couple of years that, um, like so much of this shit. Trying to write, find the right words. That so I I think um, Obama to quote him because President Obama yes love uh, as opposed to <laughs> uh, Michelle Obama there you go uh, love him or hate him a quote he had one time and I, I'm, I'm paraphrasing but he said if I went and saw a doctor and a doctor said you have cancer and he's like I'm gonna, I'm, I want a second opinion so you go to another doctor that doctor says you have cancer go to the third doctor that doctor says you have cancer. And by the time you hit your 97th doctor, I think he said it was 97, that doctor says you don't have cancer. And you're like, oh, well, no cancer. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's where it's it's a dishonest argument now. And I think when yeah. we first started, if you remember at my old place, we discussed dishonest arguments. Yeah. And and that's just kind of where my, because like I said, I'm, I'm all about what we talked about with the whole two-week thing. If you want to criticize the thing itself, cool, but don't say that we did it. Because we didn't. Mm-hmm. And so even like um, another example, masks. Like or hate masks? 
because I, I don't like wearing my mask. Um, people say it doesn't protect you. The masks don't protect you. And it's kind of a straw man because the mask, the point of the mask is not to protect yourself. It's to protect you from putting your right. your your uh, droplets out there. Yeah, your viral loads. So yeah, so if you if you want to criticize the mask, cool. Criticize that. Yeah. Does it actually stop criticize you? Criticize the point. Yeah. No, nope, say it doesn't protect you. It's a right. straw man. It doesn't. And that's where a lot of this stuff. It's just dishonest arguments. Yeah. And I'm and I, I can argue against one side, but both the left and the right do it. It's just like why is this? Because Eddie and I talked about this the other day. Like these things become so politicized that no one wants the truth. I just want my truth. You want your side to be right. I want my truth. I don't, yeah. I don't want the truth. I want my truth. And it just causes problems. Mm. Yeah. I, and I, have we, I, don't, I can't remember if we had an episode where we talked about the concept of my truth or your truth. And you, really, we, we talked about, we were talking about uh, the definitions of words and how they're misapplied. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your yeah. yeah. truth to speak my truth. And it's really just, I heard, Ben Shapiro talk about this, or he said, "It's no, it's it's your opinion. Be clear. It's not your truth. It's your opinion. Yes. I mean, there is something as an objective truth. The minute it strays from objective truth, it becomes your opinion, yes, not yes, truth. Yes. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, the the mask mandate was to protect other people from you and yeah. address that argument if you're going to argue against exactly, masks. So exactly. Do that. You know, I saw that video of like the holding the candle in front of the masks, and you know, you're blowing on the candle while you're wearing a mask." Have you seen that? I didn't see that. It was a great video. It's like, because it, it, the point of the video is to break down the different masks and what they do. If you mm -hmm. can blow on a candle and it's still blowing out while you're wearing a mask, see, what's and, the point of the mask? And, and that would be a that, fair argument. Because even from there, you could say, okay, so air comes through, but as drops coming through, you, but you could go into it right. and, and, and make a fair argument. Or my argument, which was, okay, have you ever farted? It passed through boxers, jeans, a seat came up, and you could <laughs> still smell it, and you're going to tell me a mask is protecting you from a virus? But to be fair. What? The fart is not droplets. That's gas. It's micro no, it's microscopic pieces of shit. And do you think that's what the viral load is? It's the microscopic particles no, going through the air. Because they said it's the droplet that... Oh, the a water droplet. A the physical, physical droplet. small yeah. droplet. That okay, see, that's a catch. fair argument. But see, that's, we're that's discussing the real that's argument. That's my point, though. We're actually, <laughs> but that's, that's my point. We're actually discussing things leaving our mouths. Yeah. Because, of course, if, I'm, if I have a mask on and you sneeze on me... Okay, if like, I farted when I had diarrhea, that's a pretty liquidy... Shit. <laughs> that's, that's, I'm going I'm to say this to you, Mitch. If you if your fart is so powerful that droplets are floating in the air, yeah. one, fine. Two, we should have you see someone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Also, if you're farting into the air... Yeah. No, that was... I mean, yeah, but these are the... <laughs> so if you're going to make arguments against a mandate, be on point. Don't stray. That, that's, I get it. Because there, there are legitimate arguments. Yeah. There are legitimate arguments. And unfortunately, and I'll, I'll make a political statement. Unfortunately, the people who are against it, I was talking to somebody on Facebook about this. The people who oppose a lot of these things, unfortunately, the loud voices are the insane ones. Yeah. Well, yeah. I uh, mean, the yeah. woman, the, the, the woman who said, uh, the, Danny, you know, the, the, the woman who said like that. What was it? it was like ghost sperm or something? Oh no, it was demon sperm. Demon sperm. What the fuck? Yeah. Some some woman early on came out. I forgot her name. Uh, I, I have the image she's in my head. She's a doctor. Yeah, she's a doctor, but she came out with the, uh, promoting the hy hydro hydro hydrochloric Hy hydroxychloroquine. There you go. <laughs> hydroxychloroquine. And this woman was like someone who also said that like certain diseases were caused by like demons, like demon sperm oh, right shit. when they right and, and so she was just fucking. So everyone was like, yeah, this bitch is crazy. Of, we're not listening to her. We're gonna listen to Fauci. <laughs> but then there are like legit doctors who have rational opposition. Yeah. But then they get over covered, overshadowed from the... this bitch. <laughs> you know what I mean? And now you have you have someone coming. What, what's the dude now who's saying that like drink your urine and that'll cure it? What? That's actually a true thing. Oh my god. So you That's have actually a thing. Yeah, you have that guy who's the loud voice in the room. So now everyone's like, well, fuck that guy. And so now opposing yeah. voices who are actually like rational and have good thoughts, yeah. agree or disagree with them, rational thoughts are being just drowned out from these fucking lunatics. Well, even the ones, even the loud ones with rational thoughts, like Joe Rogan, who said, yeah, I got it and I used this and this is why. And then the news comes back and says, oh, he used this, also used on horses. So he used it. Did you get that, that whole thing about the horse so, tricks thing? That is awesome. If you go back and watch his accounts, 
CNN's accounts. And like, if you just watch his Instagram and what he posts about it, like he'll do the the side by side of his video Mm -hmm. and CNN's video and how they doctor the video and like put it through a filter and all that. But that's his whole thing is that like, regardless of the facts, this is how they spun it. It wasn't a change of facts. It was just a spin. I mean, there is the spin, but, and, and, you know I love you. I'm fucking tired of Rogan being a medical expert. <laughs> like this, not, this he motherfucker never is he was. not. No, I know, but like, was it Aaron Rodgers? People are listening to him like he is. Yeah, like Aaron Rodgers. That's, that's the problem. Yeah, when Aaron Rodgers had COVID, and he's like, "Yeah, I talked to Joe Rogan and consulted with him," and I'm like, <laughs> "Why? The what the fuck? Why? <laughs> he's not a fucking doctor." Well, people listen to sorry. People listen to PhD Ferrer like she's a fucking medical Who? doctor, but uh, Doctor Ferrer, the the <laughs> LA the LA medical like chief medical uh commentator sure i don't know dr ferrer barbara ferrer she's i don't know that is you do you you live in california no she's on the she's at governor newsom's side every hour i've probably seen her face if i I saw her i'd probably know okay well i'm sorry i like i just assumed you knew no but uh no barbara ferrer is the la medical chief advisor or something like that she's some like as far as the as far as um California law goes or government goes. She's like a chief medical uh, 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 advisor, but not a doctor. She's a PhD, but not an MD. That's what I mean. But they yeah. call her Doctor Ferrer. So people say, "Oh, Doctor Ferrer says this and this and this." And it wasn't until like a year ago, everyone's like, "Wait, hang on." She had a she's, she's only, a PhD she's in not, political she's not science. An MD, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's like, "Wait, hang on." So it's that you, and that and that's fair. But but with Joe Rogan, because I remember I saw that it was a really awkward video. That's not anything to do with the COVID shit. Just him like he was like shirtless and he was like. Yeah, I've been taking this shit, and I'm just yeah, like, yeah, put yeah, a yeah. shirt on, go yeah, back yeah, to your yeah. studio. But like, <laughs> he, like, look. Well, it. I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious, like, because Joe Rogan said, "Hey, I took, I took, you know, the horse dewormer or whatever he did." Did he then expose himself to COVID patients, or sure. did he just was he still being I, very careful? I think, I think he did isolate himself. I think he did. So no, his his whole point was he isolated and he treated with. Not the vaccine, but with some like other medical stuff. Turns out one of the things he used is also used in a variety of other shit like H like like hydrogen dioxide or dihydrogen monoxide. Uh, H2O, sure. yeah, which is used in all kinds of pesticides. Well, he didn't say shit. that. No, but it's that kind of thing where it's like yeah. this, it's that argument. Yeah, it's this yeah. thing I used. It's also is a chief uh, uh, ingredient in this horse dewormer. So they spun it and they made it say, okay, he. He horse dewormed himself, and that's why he got, you know. But he did, I watched that. He did say, I use ivermectin, which ivermectin has been proven does not do shit for COVID. It does. I'm sorry. Um, and, and the problem with that video, too, is logically speaking, you have people, unfortunately, who are saying, like, COVID's not a big deal. COVID's not a big deal. COVID's not a big deal. You can just get it, do nothing, and you're fine. But then you have Joe Rogan, and I actually like Joe Rogan. Um, and I, I, comp- I disagree with a lot of his recent stuff, but... So you have Joe Rogan go on, yeah, I got COVID, I have bad symptoms, this is what I'm doing, and now I feel better. So these same people who said, COVID's not a big deal, I don't have to do anything, are now going, oh, see, all I have to do is use ivermectin and this other shit, not the vaccine or any of these things, but this thing is right. Does that make sense? Yeah, so yeah. before, it, n- nothing is required. But now Joe Rogan said this, so see, he did that, I'm just going to do that. See, it's again, it's what you were talking about, like people choosing their experts. Yeah, and, and so as someone who's not even an expert, and it's just it's, it's it's Joe Rogan. It's Joe Rogan. I like Joe Rogan. I think he's cool. I like his podcast, but you shouldn't be Aaron Rodgers consulting with him. It's pretty funny. There's a lot of celebrities that are falling into the same list: Elon Musk, Joe Rogan, Aaron Rodgers. Um, uh, uh, yeah, there's a few that like they they're geniuses and they break. You know, they, they suddenly they have a camera in their face and they start speaking their opinions and all of a sudden they start saying crazy shit as humans tend to do. Sure. And suddenly everyone's like, well, you know, yeah, I like Joe Rogan, but, you know, some of his recent stuff is kind of, you know, you know, like I love Elon Musk, but his, his kind of his, you know, he has some opinions that I'm just like, you know, well, no, but I, so Dave Chappelle, another one that people are. Well, see, the thing with Chappelle and I, actually that's a great comparison with Chappelle. Chappelle pretty much goes, OK, here's how I feel about something. Uh-huh. He doesn't say, this is what it is. He says, this is how I feel about it. When Joe Rogan right now it has people on his show peddling nonsense. And even, um, I don't have the names of it, but someone was on his show, I think, last week or the week before. Like I said, I watch, I watch his podcast. I enjoy it. But someone was on the show and pretty much said some things that, what's the guy's name he had? Something that Joe Rogan had previously said was false, statistically. And Joe Rogan was like, 
no, you're wrong. And he's like, no, it is. And, and threw out some facts. And he's like, well, where are we? And so Joe Rogan pretty much was proven wrong. Hmm. And instead of saying, oh, you like, yeah, okay, yeah, you're right. Now he's using one of those like moving the goalpost, all that shit. And so I think it's fine if Joe Rogan wants to state his opinion. But when it comes to like medical shit, knowing his influence, it's kind of irresponsible. Oh, okay. So he just, it's more like he shouldn't talk about I think that if he, he it's one thing to say look it i took ivermectin and i believe it worked for me but i'm not a doctor it's another thing to be like ivermectin worked and it's the it's the thing see I, I haven't seen his the i haven't seen him make that strong of a of a stance on it so maybe. i don't know if he if he did or so not i know because he has he has alex jones and and uh um uh, bernie sanders like on his show he, he does has, have like, a wide variety he's yeah. got wide yeah so for him he seems to me to be the epitome of this is my opinion, whatever. Cause here on my show, I have Alex Jones and then Bernie Sanders. Yeah. Obviously I'm throwing a net over everything. This just happens to work for me. Well, I know. So for the ivermectin thing, I do know when I watched that he was very much saying this works cause he's like, this is what oh, okay. I did. I feel great. Okay. Well then, yeah, then, um, then yeah, I'll concede that, that he probably shouldn't well, give advice. And, and don't get me wrong. I'm not going to be a hypocrite. If I had that audience, I might like I might get you know in my own hubris and say yeah. some shit and be like this is what's right. I he also get it. peddles some fucking like uh, uh, powder that makes your brain work better. I don't know if it works. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's also advertising. What do you? It's just do? And, and it's it's anyone when you hear someone with influence say just some crazy shit and it's like you. No, should No, anytime better. you have someone of influence make a definitive opinion, you immediately in the crosshairs. Yeah. It worked for him, but he's immediately in the crosshairs for making a definitive opinion or yeah, you know so. I, how we got on Joe? Right? We were talking about um, what is that noise? I don't know. It's I on. apologize. That's my my laptop. <sighs> Chatting. There it is again. <laughs> no, there uh, was a. Yeah. I don't know, Danny. What do you think about Joe? Um, I'll say this: he's not an expert. Uh, I would trust him with some MMA stuff, uh, some stand-up comedy stuff. But when it comes to my health, um, and the health of other people, no, not at all. Um, like I know he's a, he's a healthy guy, but people are different mm -hmm. and what's, what works for you, not probably not going to work for me. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I'm glad he found that, you know, Ivermectin worked for him. Great. It's probably not going to work for, you know, the people on mass. Yeah. Cause the people uh, in mass probably aren't at the gym six days a week. Like he is and, exactly. and clean yeah. as fuck as he lives. Mm -hmm. And so he probably yeah. could have done nothing and had the same exact result. So mm -hmm. I will concede. I'll agree with you guys that if he is taking a stance like this worked and it can work for everyone, I think that is wrong. Yeah. If he took a stance of this worked for me, then, you know, fuck CNN. But yeah. <laughs> and but then so. at, at, at the same time as you have to look at, was he just doing ivermectin? Right. Was it, it was just a, ivermectin? It was a slur of things. Yeah. Was he not isolating? Was he not wearing a mask? And did he expose himself to COVID, uh, COVID infected people? Yeah. If not, then how do you know? You got to eliminate the variables. And I don't think that like he took the time to eliminate every single variable. That's a great point. Yeah. That's a great point. My That's my great my point. main point, and there, that is a good point. My main issue with Rogan right now though is I forgot the guy's name he had on a couple weeks ago. Alex Jones. No. Um. Some guy who pretty ben much. Ben Shapiro. <laughs> no, some random guy. I, I get the name real quick because I remember I was watching a video. There was another point. I, I don't know if we wanted to move on. Well, um, no, no don't play that. Oh, he's got it. He's on his phone. Peter McCullough? McCulloch? Maybe? I don't know. Dude came on and, and started kind of spouting some information. So guy comes on and starts spouting information that is provably not true. And Joe Rogan gave him no pushback. Just let him talk. Which... In one hand, I actually respect because sometimes it's better to let somebody speak and show themselves than you trying to, you know, stop them. It's a com it's a comedian's tactic of when you have a heckler, you kind of let them talk, and exactly. eventually the heckler loses himself and exactly. loses. So. But so this guy came on, spouted this nonsense, and Joe Rogan gave him no pushback, let him speak. I think he even agreed with him to an extent. And Joe Rogan took a lot of flack for it, like, "Hey, mm -hmm. this guy's full of shit. Why'd you do it?" Then, like a week or two later, like I said, this other guy came on. And was refuting what the other dude said. And Joe Rogan pushed back on him hard. Interesting. Okay. Even though one was supported by facts and one was not. That's my issue with Rogan is everyone has personal biases. Lord knows I do. We all do. Of course. But when it becomes clear that you're, I don't know. it's I'm getting off on a tangent here. But that's my issue with Rogan. It's like, fine, you have your biases. 
it's fine to admit your biases, and, and but but it's clear when you're not pushing back on one guy and then pushing back hard okay. on another guy. So this goes back to the 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 quote unquote unbiased news source is does he claim to be completely biased or does he claim that he has a bias? I think Rogan always tries to portray himself as like I am. I'm just a, a pillar of logic. Okay. I'm going to ask the right questions. I never got that from him. Believe, that's like, what I but got But that's from just him. me Me personally. It's just like he's always been, he's always had his slant. Even when he has people on that he agrees with or what he doesn't agree with, he usually prefaces with his stance. He presents the facts, but he always has his opinion. That's fair. So, I've, I've always, yeah. the way I've watched him is that he tries to be like, I am objective. That's how the vibe I got oh, from okay. him. From, so when he, from what I've seen, to go off what Mike's saying, I think from what I've seen, he's like he's he says he always says I'm gonna I'm gonna be the middle. I'm gonna hear both sides. I'm gonna do that. But then he smokes some weed or he drops some DMT <laughs> and then he just loses that and he can't help and goes, it. Goes and then just spouts his opinion about everything. It is um, so much harder to be objective than it is to be opinionated. Yeah. And it it's is not a it's sec- really it's not hard to be objective. To yeah, and so when he smokes weed, he's yeah. like, "Fuck the objectivity. Let me tell you what I think." You know, and yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. and that's, 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 I mean, honestly, that's how you get, that's how you get viewers. That's how you get listeners. Like mm-hmm. we're, we're, I mean, we're as successful as we are because we are each very heavily opinionated and people want to yeah. hear those opinions. Yeah. If I just came on here and just spouted facts for 45 minutes, I don't care. We wouldn't have anybody watching. Because <laughs> everyone has, care. everyone has Google. They can find yeah. the fucking, all right. Yeah. Viewers <laughs> will go down to three viewers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, and that's why I think it's like how you win people over is when you say, look, okay, objectively, this is the fact. One side says this, one side says this. I tend to agree with this side. No, I think, and that's where um, I can't believe I'm about to defend CNN. Uh, a lot of people are like, CNN, fake news, or blah, blah, blah. But I actually like watching CNN. They're they're obviously liberally biased. I'm not going to... Yeah, and I'd have but, more respect if they just admitted. But, like, but you know, what yeah. they do is they do... They will say, here are all the facts. Yeah. And then after they say it, it, they don't say this out loud. But it's like, here are the facts, and here's how I feel about it. Right, right, and right. And then right. that's when they're like, oh, they're fake. But no, yeah. they, they, they they put the facts out there, Yeah, and then they, they t- talk about how they feel about it. Bill Maher does Fine. a great job of that. Yeah. Ben Shapiro does a great job of that. I mean, sure. your opinions of Ben Shapiro aside, he does he never in, he never will claim that he's objective. He will always say, no, like, he's no, clearly like, I'm, yeah. I am biased. I am very biased. And here is why I'm biased. And he'll go from that. So that's, like, yeah, I, that's I why that. I have huge respect for Bill Maher and for name a guy and, and for Ben Shapiro, <laughs> who, who will at least be honest with their biases. Yeah. And, and I'm fine with that. It's just like with, in my opinion, with Joe Rogan now, it's so Shapiro agree with him or disagree with him. He does say, here's the fact. Here's my take on it. Right. I feel like Rogan now is is straying into that zone. Trevor of, Noah, that was the name I couldn't think of. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great Another example. Great example. He's yeah. like facts, facts. This is what I think. Because he's a comedian. Yeah. Right. But Rogan is now veering in that territory of the facts are not facts. Oh. Okay. Here's my opinion, but also these things are what I'm saying is fact, right. but it's not. Interesting. I'm. Okay. I, I feel like he's starting to veer into that territory. Yeah. Which. If I was a man in that that position with that kind of power, sure. I might too. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not going to be a hypocrite. I might too. But you think the listeners need to be honest with themselves and realize he's not just an objective interviewer anymore. He's now he has skin his in the opinions. Game. He's getting yeah. he's he's joined the game. Yeah, they, um, they said he he has more viewers than like any news program. I, I, I don't saw, doubt it. It's, I saw it's a graph fun, recently. It's a yeah. fun it's a fun podcast. I enjoy it. I it's actually great. enjoy it. Um, anyway. Back to because we're running kind of long. I want to get back to the uh, the um, the two week shutdown. Do yes. you think it would have worked? Um, do you guys see? Because I started seeing a similarity with the uh, the vaccine mm-hmm. beliefs. If only everybody could. Because the the argument is every, if everyone stayed home for two weeks, well, there wouldn't be a problem. If now you see the argument, if only everyone got vaccinated and got their boosters, then we wouldn't have a problem. Do you see the similarities like I do? Because I'm starting to. I'm personally starting to see the same kind of similarity of this is the answer. Um, and unless everybody does it, we're fucked. So what do you think? What do you think? I mean, I'll, I'll take this one, Mike, if it's okay with you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> fuck. Um, no, I'm joking. Fine. <laughs> so, I mean, and I, I was telling this to, uh, to Frankie or, or, or earlier this week and it's like science, 
I don't for whatever reason doesn't account for the stupid factor. Uh, yeah. They 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 don't account for that the, that group of people that are just so fucking stupid that they don't know what's what's good for them. Right. And so uh, when they make the absolute statement like that, like it, it just everyone did this, everything would be fine. But you got to realize society can only move as fast as its slowest person. Mm -hmm. and, and as you know, as a culture, as a society, as a, as as a people, we we are we are we are stuck moving as fast as our slowest person. Um, and unfortunately, the slowest person is usually the stupidest person. Um, I, like, I like that, and, like the, the, the fault that our leaders keep running into is not taking into account of the people that won't listen and won't do yeah. it. And yeah. they, we saw this before COVID, they're running into this issue with the racism issue is that they wanted to eradicate all racism in America. And one thing that uh, um, I think it was Larry Elder said, it's like, well, you do know 10% of Americans still believe that Elvis is still alive. Yeah, the, the mm. you're never gonna completely eradicate a stupidity, whether yeah. it, be it racism, be it whether Elvis is alive or whether they don't want to get vaccinated or not be shut down for two weeks. So it's on the fault of leaders now, in my opinion, that they're ignoring the fact that they will never get that last ten percent. Yeah. Um, okay. So then the question has to be asked: What can they do to get that ten percent? But then that's a violation of human rights. Then it becomes a government. See, overreach. I think too much energy and resources are spent trying to get that last 10% rather than just accepting they'll never get that last 10% and make accommodations and try to move on from that. Yeah. So going back to the vaccine, though, because that's what the question was. And then as normal, we we went off on. Tangents. We never tangent. It's very out of character. <laughs> no, we never tangent. Um, this is this is this is strict A to B. Yeah, that's what we're doing here. <laughs> so this is a linear progression. What were we talking about? Um, vaccines. Yes. Vaccines. The question, if I understand it, is if if do I do we believe that if everyone got the vaccine, the problem would be solved? Mm -hmm. That was the question. So no, my question was. Do you see the similarities of, in my opinion, okay. naivete in believing that if everyone stayed home for two weeks, it would be no longer a problem? Mm -hmm. If everyone, the similarity between that and if everyone got the vaccine, it would no longer be a problem. Okay. I mean, I guess like the, the, the wording and like kind of like the, uh, the sound bites, if you will, like the people saying that, I can see the similarity. The, the thing is, I do think that if people got the vaccine, excuse me, beer bubbles, um, carbonation. Yeah, I think. So your your question is not, do I think it would work? The question is, do you see similarities between the two talking points? I do. Um, the difference, in my opinion, is, and this is from what I understand, I could be wrong. The two to three weeks staying at home is more of a theory, to where the vaccination has been historically proven to be true. Um, the polio vaccine pretty much eliminated polio. Measles pretty much eliminated measles. Polio but, immunization. That's the big difference between the, the the COVID vaccine and what we know as vaccines is that people with the COVID vaccine still get COVID, still get hospitalized. It's more well, of like a, a vaccine, not so much an immunization like the polio is. Yes. Well, and I was going to get into that as well. Uh, but measles, all these things. So... Even with polio, measles, and all that stuff, there is a percent, there is a statistical chance that people can still get measles, can still get polio. It's just been drastically reduced. So vaccines never 100%. There's always breakthrough cases. So, and I'm kind of going off on a tangent, but I, I discussed this with somebody and we came up with an analogy. If we, if there's, let's say it's a zombie scenario and there's 100 people and we're all defending a ranch, and I'm just trying to think of something. So there's a hundred of us that are all like on this ranch and we all have a knife in our hand and zombies are coming. The knife is enough to kill zombie, right? So we're fighting, but eventually enough zombies, someone's going to get bit. And if somebody gets bit, the chances of everyone else getting bit goes up. So if somebody started walking around saying, Hey, here's a fucking rifle. Here's an assault rifle with as much ammo as you needed. If I took the rifle and nobody else took a rifle, my chances of surviving go up drastically, but there's still a chance that somehow a, a zombie can come get me. And if nobody else takes a rifle, there's a chance that they might get bit and a zombie might get me from behind. Mm. 
So the idea is if everyone had the rifle, there's still a small chance that a zombie could get through and bite someone. But the chances are drastically lower now because everyone has a fucking rifle. So with the vaccine, it it is a thing like, yeah, breakthrough cases happen because if it's still bouncing around everywhere, it, there's a chance that you're going to get it. If, if, if COVID keeps flicking you in the face, eventually they're going to flick, like, it's going to get through. Yeah. Um, so that's like, we're like, yeah, like statistically though, if everyone hypothetically a hundred percent of the nation was vaccinated, COVID would still be bouncing around, but it would just fall out drastically. Mm -hmm. And I think that is supported by science. If I'm wrong, comment. Um, <laughs> but, and, and leave a comment with your scientist. Yeah. yeah. But no, Eddie and I talked about this the other day too. Like it, but it's become a politicized thing to where if you say that, cause I say it, I'm not a Democrat, I'm not a liberal, but I, I look at numbers and I'm like, okay, this is true. And everyone's like, oh, you must be a fucking liberal because mm. you're pro-vax. And it's like, mm, no, I just looked at the numbers. I looked at the facts. And so anyway, I'm going off a tangent, but like, no, I think if everyone did get vaccinated, COVID would still be around. I think they call it, it's the endemic, right? Endemic phase that a, a disease exists. Mm. I oh, think. okay. I don't, I haven't heard that, but yeah. Like, okay. pan, like I was, I was going to say, um, if you want to finish, go, Mike, go ahead. No, that, that's my thing is like the COVID is here to stay. It's going to be around, but if everyone got vaccinated, it, the problem would not be an issue mm. as much as it is today. Okay. That's my opinion. Uh, just to go off of your comparison earlier, Mitch, you, you said like, there's, there's parallels to be said, like, you know, you know, the, the, the top people were like, well, if everybody did this, then it wouldn't be a problem. Or now they're saying if everybody does this, it wouldn't be a problem. Um, I, the only issue I have with that is I don't think anybody ever said if you quarantine, if everybody, if everybody quarantines for, uh, you know, two or three weeks, then we get rid of the virus. I think the problem there is get rid of the virus. That's true. They yeah. Say yeah. The, mm -hmm. From the, from the, from the start, it was just flatten the curve. Right. Yeah. Minimize, right. minimize the infection rate, not get rid of it. Cause like Mike said, it's here. It's not going anywhere for the foreseeable future. We just want to minimize infections and, uh, you know, control or manage the infections as much as possible and wearing a mask, getting your vaccination. Those are two things you can do to do that. Yeah, that's true. I mean, yeah, there, there, there was differences there. It was the two weeks. If everyone stayed home, we could flatten the curve, which they did, but they didn't lift the mandates. Um, but yeah, and it is a different scenario now with the vaccines, but no, it's a different scenario, but yeah. I understand the, 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 the wording and like the, um, the mentality, I guess the that, takes of it. Yeah. yeah. That this is the answer. If only everyone could do it then. Yeah. And I, be. but I think, and I think part of the reason too, and this is where I'm against mandates for a different reason. I feel like if I, so Mitch, we're drinking beer. Yeah. I'm like, Hey, he's drinking Sierra Nevada. Yeah. I'm like, Hey, Sierra Nevada is dog shit. You should drink Claremont craft ales. Your shit's whack. Mine's better. Fuck you. Uh, but <laughs> no, your, your response naturally would be fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> but, but if I, if I was like, Hey Mitch, so you're drinking Sierra Nevada. Okay. I'm drinking this. Let me explain to you why I think this is a better beer. Mm. And, and you know what? Maybe you should try it and then see what you think. Like it's the approach to me. A mandate is that aggressive. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. And then, so people are naturally like, well, what if, what if I don't want to? Yeah. And so, but if, if it was something explained in, and like there was maybe some education on it, some sort of description, some literature. So that's why hey, I'm if we give mandates. if we give people a hundred dollars if they get the vaccine, you know that kind of, <laughs> that kind of shit. <laughs> don't get me. Yeah, uh, but you, you understand what I'm saying? Incentives. Yeah, a different approach like, rather explain than explain it. Yeah, and I was like, that was one thing. I'm, and everyone's like, well, America's so fucking dumb. If you tell them what to do, they won't do it. See, that's one approach. The approach being like, this is the way Americans are. Now you can fight the tide all you want. That's not going to change anything. Or you can accept how the tide yeah. is and just build your dam accordingly. It's like, you know, the people waste so much time and energy saying like, you know, if only Americans did what they were told, we wouldn't be in this problem. And I'm from a point of like, look, they're never going to do what they're told. Because you're, you're, you're losing right off the, the You're the losing. Yeah. yeah. So come up with a better idea. This no, is, that's, it, that's, I completely agree. That's, that's my idea. That's why I'm against you're not going to get into a pout off, you know, saying, well, yeah. they did this. Well, they did that. You know, fuck you. Like, come up with something like the environmentalists are finally starting to get some ground because they're like, hey, you know how much money you can save if you have solar panels? 
And everyone's like, oh, shit, really? Money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Money. Exactly. Yeah. So anyway. no, and that's, that's where um, a lot of people, they say, I'm pro-vaccine, but I'm against mandates because freedoms. I'm against mandates because it's like, that's not going to work. You're going to piss people off. Yeah. That's my opinion. Like, I'm yeah. completely pro-vaccine. Because you're pro drawing vaccine. lines and you're making us versus yes. them. It's this kind of like, you know. Uh, and especially in this political like climate, why do you want some another thing to Another fight thing about? for us and them kind of thing. It's like, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Anyway. We're coming up that we just passed an hour. Okay. You know, I think that's, I think that's good guys. <laughs> no, hold on. <laughs> and another thing. <laughs> We're not done. Uh, Die Hard. I still want to kill some people. Die Hard's the fucking Die best hard. Easter movie in, no. Okay. Pulp Fiction is the best Easter movie I've ever seen. You're joking. Okay. I thought you were, wait, no, it's not an Easter movie. What? He said honey bunny. Okay. Okay. That's true. He did say honey, buddy. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to yet another fucking discussion about COVID and the mandates. And, you know, we talk round and round and we come to the same conclusions usually every time. We're just beating this dead horse. and I don't give a but shit. But you know what? I'll, I'll, I'm going to say this right now. Say it. Uh, that was me pounding the desk. Pound it. This, this episode and other episodes you have should be the solution. They should listen to the, us. The problem with America... <laughs> And our politicians <laughs> is that they 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 straw men, they misrepresent arguments, and they fight over petty. Danny's gone. Yeah, bye, Danny. They straw man, and, they, <laughs> and he's, he's gone. Exactly. Um, they straw and they 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 make false arguments. They 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 misrepresent each other, and us right now just discuss it rationally. And they should listen to us. They should listen to us. The problem is, like, they should we, again. Ten percent still think Elvis Presley is alive. Yes. So yes, you um, figure out how to manage that last ten percent, and you should run for office. Because <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, touche. Yeah. Um, anyway. Yeah. Good episode. Good talk. Let's see if we can get Biden on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send an email. That'd be good. I'll see That'd be we, good. See That'd do. be good. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everyone, to our fucking hour-long discussion again about COVID and shutdowns and our disagreements and us obviously finding why we disagree with the leaders. Like, you know, they they fucked up there. It's really yeah. Monday morning quarterbacking, but still. I mean, well, yeah. still. You know, thanks for, li thanks for watching. Thanks for listening, whatever it be. Uh, we are some fake philosophers just chatting away, and uh, we'll, we'll see you guys next time. Yep. Later. Bye.